the IRA or Inflation Reduction Act was recently renamed the Tesla Enrichment Act. I didn't make that up. I'm borrowing that from somebody else. I can't remember who. Anyway, as such, it is hard to remember that this dumb giveaway will last forever or even until 2032 as expected because the numbers are so big for Tesla. But for as long as it does last, I'm perfectly happy to take part in the enrichment that the stock is going to get as the street will eventually figure out what the real numbers are for Tesla. So there is an issue, though, with regard to the street finding out, with regard to you finding out, with regard to me even finding out, because Tesla might be wise to keep these numbers contained within cost of goods rather than giving the world a peek at the actual figures that I would like to see in order to confirm my theories. So I think they might do a note on the subject, but even that could cause headlines in terms of the amount of money that it may turn out to be. Well, this is Randy Kirk. If this content is helpful to you, if you like it, please hit the like, please hit the subscribe. And this is the third in a series of at least five videos that I'm doing with the, my projections for the next weeks, months, years, and even the rest of the decade in all different categories of Tesla's business. If that's helpful to you, you might want to hit notify so that you get notified about the last two. And of course, you can go back and look at the two that I did over the last couple of days. Uh, you might also want to join Patreon because all of my numbers, all of these spreadsheets that are on Google Sheets, and I put these uh, spreadsheets up into my Patreon, and you can go in there and make copies of them, play with them, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's go on from there. The numbers we're looking at in this spreadsheet are not the $7,500 per vehicle that the consumer gets off the window sticker when they buy. Well, technically, this year, that is a tax credit on their return when they file next year. Next year, it will be an actual $7,500 that they'll get right when they make the purchase. But in any case, we're not talking about that $7,500. We're talking about the amount that a factory, a manufacturer gets, whether that's a battery manufacturer, an energy storage manufacturer, a car manufacturer, etc. These are individuals who are either making the batteries or using the batteries in their products, and they get $35 per kilowatt hour for every battery they make, and they get $10 per kilowatt hour for every battery that they stick into a pack. Now, there's rules with regard to this, as re with regard to where the raw materials are sourced. There's rules with regard to where the batteries are made. I'm not going to get to any and all of that. So we'll just talk about the parts that we know about. All right. We know for a fact that Tesla gets a portion of the $35 that Panasonic will get for the batteries made in Reno. We know what the amount is now. We know that's $7 per kilowatt hour. What we don't know, and this is where the subject matter, where, what I was talking about before comes in. We don't know if that means that Panasonic, when they ship these batteries to Tesla, will just take that $7 off the cost of good, uh, off the uh, invoice amount. And so they'll receive it as a, as one line item or whether it will show as a specific line item, this is a tax incentive amount. Um, and then we don't know once Tesla receives that invoice, whether they will show it on their books as a line item for cost of goods and a separate line item for a tax incentive. We just don't know how that bookkeeping is going to work. And that's true for the batteries that, that uh, Tesla will be making. So when Tesla makes a 4680 battery and they get the $35 incentives, internally they're going to sell that battery they'll internally sell that battery from the battery division over to the uh to the uh, car division and so will that transfer over just as a single line item this is what that battery's costing in the cost of goods and the bill of materials is that going to be just 35 dollars per kilowatt less kilowatt hour less or is that going to be showing as two line items one for one for the amount of the actual cost of goods and then a separate am amount for the bill of materials well that's going to matter in terms of what we can see as as a uh, uh, tesla owners what whether we see what this is ending up coming from the government as opposed to what's actually in the real cost of goods sold um technically i'd like to see it uh as a separate line item but there could be reasons for hiding it anyway and then there's the ten dollar credit 
uh, that Tesla would get for putting the battery, whether they make it or whether they buy it from a third party, depending on the, where it's sourced, they get this $10 every time they put it in a pack for the car or for the energy storage units. And once again, we're not going to know how that $10 is being booked. All right. So we'll do our own estimating. Uh, maybe we'll be right. Maybe we'll be wrong. Maybe we'll never know. Mary Barra did mention it the other day when she was talking about their profit, in, you know, their EV profits in the future. She said, look, you know, we're not going to be profitable on the cars until much later in the decade. But by 2026, I think she said 2025 or 2026, we will actually show a profit because of the IRA incentives. Again, whether they show that as separate books, booking or not, we don't know. Anyway, um, it's also possible, this is the last thing, you got to got to take these things into consideration. As an owner, as a stockholder, you want to know these things. We also don't know whether Tesla will profit from any of these incentives. What? What do you mean? How can they not profit? Well, you know, Elon likes to drive down the retail as much as he possibly can in order to increase the TAM, in order to, to make sure that we get as many vehicles into the hands of consumers as fast as we can. Yes, I'm still in Kauai, and that's my local rooster, and he's enjoying this video just as much as you are. Okay, so it's possible that all of this money will just be passed along in the retail and just by lowering the cost. Now, what we saw last year was when that got to be too crazy and the um, number of days that it took for Tesla to ship the product got way out there. And when Elon started seeing people flipping cars, buying the cars and reselling them because there was such a disparity uh, in the amount of time it took to get the cars, well, then he didn't, uh, then he raised prices actually. So again, how much of this will be passed on to the consumer? We don't know. How much of it will just be a absolute profit right in the hands of, of uh, Tesla and we as shareholders, we don't know. I'm going to assume for the purposes of this spreadsheet, for the purposes of this projection, that all of it drops to the bottom line directly um, as, a, as a, a number that you'll see on the spreadsheet. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the spreadsheet. Okay, we're gonna start with, um, okay, we're gonna start by looking at the gigawatt hours that we believe will be produced and are purchased for the purposes of putting into packs. So you see here the Panasonic right now is at about 39 gigawatt hours in 2023. They've said they're going to increase it by 10%. So that takes us up to 43. I think they'll continue to increase it. So I've got it going to 45, 50, 55, 60, and 70 in 2029. Uh, actually, we stop in 2029. Okay. Panasonic other batteries. They're going to be making batteries in two new locations. I'm going to assume that we'll start seeing some production out of those locations. Um, actually, I'm going to add uh, another 40 here. I forgot. Okay. Then we have Tesla Austin batteries. So these are the batteries that Tesla is making in the Austin facility. I'm going to assume that that this year will come out to about 30 gigawatt hours. Next year, 80. Why not 100 next year? Yeah, why not 100? Well, I probably think it's going to be 100, but I'm trying to be conservative. The following year in 2025, I'm showing, it, showing the full 100 gigawatt hours. And then it's my belief that they intend to continue to increase the ramp there all the way up to 200. So you can see we're increasing it over here. Then we have the Tesla Reno batteries. Now, they're not going to make any in 2023, but I'm going to say they're going to make 30 gigawatts next year. Get that up to 80, then 120. That eventually is going to get to 500. I'm showing it in, as only 400 in 2029. Then you got the Tesla um, Lathrop, I'm sorry, then we have the Tesla Reno semi-packs. So these are putting the gigawatt hours into semi-packs, into the semi-trucks. Uh, semi I'm showing that as two gigawatt hours in 23. That might be high. 40 gigawatts, which would be for 20,000 trucks <clears throat> in 2024. And then getting uh, to 35,000 trucks in 2025, et cetera. You can see the gigawatt hours of packs. Lathrop battery packs, um, showing zero and zero on those battery packs because right now those are coming in from China, but I'm showing that it'll switch over to US made uh, and start to count starting in 2025. Tesla Fremont battery packs, these would be the cars made in Fremont. You see I'm staying fairly steady there, figuring about 600,000 cars. Then we got the Tesla Auto Tesla Austin battery packs. These are for cars made in Austin, showing 15 gigawatt hours this year, going to 40, then 70. 
as they make both uh, Model Ys and then Cybertrucks in Austin. Then we got the Tesla Mexico battery packs. We got that coming up to, I'm showing just a little bit in the end of 2024, and then steadily ramping up after that. Then we have uh, the Tesla Fremont batteries. That's, I'm showing only as four gigawatt hours this year, going to seven, 10, 12, because what did we have announced today? Well, we had announced today that there's going to be another facility. Uh, by the way, I made a mistake on a, on a video the other day where I said it was only, I think I said something like, uh, 1200 square feet and i meant 120,000 square feet i said it was a big building and then 1200 square feet anyway it's 120,000 square feet of space in fremont uh for as, as some kind of an addition to their capacity uh to make batteries there so anyway i'm showing an increase there um and then the a second nafta battery storage manufacturing location uh that would, hasn't been announced yet I'm saying that could be either Austin, it could be Mexico, it could be a new one in Canada, all kinds of possibilities, and there may be even more. So I'm really kind of going low on this number, uh, really conservative on that number. All right, now we're going to multiply it times the dollars. Again, let's talk about the assumptions again real quick. Tesla will split third-party battery manufacturing cost 80-20, with Tesla being the 20%. So whether they buy these from Panasonic, whether they buy them from CATL, you know, there's all kinds of makers that are going to be making these products in North America, making batteries in North America and selling them to Tesla. I'm going to say that roughly they're going to get seven bucks out of these out of these deals, out of the 35. Uh, Tesla will move as quickly as possible to have 100% of U.S. and Mexico products using compliant batteries. So in other words, when they make a car, they make a, a, a power wall, or they make a mega pack in the United States or in the uh, North American uh, t territories, when they make these packs, they will move as quickly as possible to make sure every battery that goes into those products is a is a compliant battery, whether that's in made in the United States or made in a uh, uh, in an area where the, we have a trading agreement. And then finally, that some of the tax benefits will be in cost of goods, not shown as a separate light item, and we may never know how that's done. Okay, so we take uh, all of these, uh, the information that we have, like multiplying by $7 per unit here uh, on the Tesla Austin batteries, we multiply by 35 there, et cetera, et cetera. Not gonna take you through all that math. It would be terribly boring. So where does it all come out? Well, so the other day there was a uh, a, a couple of of, of the uh, folks who follow Tesla, who did some a little bit of a deep dive. I think it was really not that great a deep dive, but one of them was Morgan Stanley, and Morgan Stanley said that Tesla would have uh, income this year, in 2023, of way more than this almost two billion dollars that I'm showing. Okay. So where they got their numbers, I don't know. We ended up being very close for 2024. They were a little higher, maybe around six and a half billion dollars. Uh, but I'm thinking it's going to be about two billion dollars this year, about 5.6 next year, going to nine and a half in 2026, to 13 in 2027, almost 18 in 2028. Um, you can see it just keeps going up. Um, and now we're going to divide that by the 3.4 billion shares that are outstanding to show that it's come, come in at points at 600 million. I'm sorry, at uh, six, uh, 60 cents a share. Um, and then it's a dollar 70 next year, going all the way up to eight dollars and 60 cents a share. If you multiply that on a PE of 50, it means that the invent the IRA, the contribution to the share price in 2023 should be almost $30. Do you think anybody's figuring $30 into the share price of Tesla for the IRA in 2023? I don't. Maybe now Morgan Stanley might be because of this, but Morgan Stanley could be wrong because Tesla might be using it to help lower the cost of the cars. So we'll, we may never know the answer to that. Anyway, next year it'll be $83 a share. The following year, 139, and then almost $200, followed by 264, and then 359. I mean, it just goes up and up and up. And then by 2029, you can see that if they don't change it, if the various Congresses are willing to let this happen, then Tesla could be getting $29 billion from the U.S. government in tax incentives 
in 2030, making it $8.60 a share and contributing $429 to the share price at a 50 PE. So that's why I'm saying Congress might end up saying, uh-uh, this is these numbers, these numbers are just too big. Uh, there, was, there will start to be headlines. Now, you know, there's going to be a lot of folks like the dealers and the, uh, the you know, GM's dealers and Ford's dealers and, you know, the rest of the companies. Um, there could be the, the consumer who will want to continue to get this benefit in the, in the price of the car. So maybe it'll keep going until the 2032 expiration, uh, but maybe not. <laughs> anyway, that's, there is the number, the final number, $429 uh, a share in 2030 at a 50 PE. Well, don't know if that's helpful to you. It should be helpful to you. That is big, big numbers. It is not anything to shake a stick at. So if this was helpful to you, you know exactly what to do. You know to like the content and then subscribe, hit notify. If you wanna see, there's two more of these coming up. There's two more that you might've missed. You wanna go back and see. And uh, then we've got a couple of amazing, amazing interviews coming this week. Um, yeah, you're going to want to see those too. So hit the notify button. And then right now there's a seven day free trial on Patreon. And of course, what a great time to be on my Patreon because all of these spreadsheets are up on my Patreon where you can take a look. You can even, you know, screenshot it and uh, make your own deal. And, and who knows, you know, you might, you might come up with something better. And I'd love to see your comments. Help me out with your comments. It has been great talking to you. Click the link below to get your paperback, Kindle or audiobook now.